Today, the guys will be doing a blind review of Jim Beam Devil's Cut. Jim Beam Devil's Cut is a Kentucky straight bourbon from the Jim Beam Distillery. The Devil's Cut is the term used for the whiskey that is absorbed by the oak barrels. This whiskey is made from bourbon extracted from the barrel and then mixed with other Jim Beam bourbons. This bottle comes in at 90 proof. We paid $15 for our bottle with an average retail price of $23. As always, your prices may vary. Enjoy. Thanks, Joyce. I'm Josh. I'm Keith. And we're going to drink that whiskey that Joyce just told you about. Licorice. Yeah, definitely getting licorice. Getting a little bit of funk. Like black jelly beans. That's what it smells like to me. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Jelly bean. Sugary. Break a lot of sugar. But that, that licorice undertone's right there. Which it's, tells me I'm going to like this. I love black licorice. That, it makes me skeptical because I'm not overtly a fan of black licorice or just licorice. But it is starting to move in a more cherry direction, like a black cherry for me. It's, start, it's starting to slowly move in that direction. But it still smells a lot like black jelly beans. All right, let's go to taste. Oh, that black licorice is strong. I don't think so. It is for me. And then it kind of fades to that orange spice. Yeah. Honestly, I think it's a very fruity, orangey, a little bit zesty. That was much more enjoyable for me on the palate than it was on the nose. That spiciness, though, is still there. Like, if we're, oh, we're talking, we're talking about like a spicy jelly bean, that's that's this. This is a, that's yeah. a spicy jelly bean on the palate. Yeah, I'm picking up clove. I'm, I'm just picking up all kinds of different spices. Going back to the nose, I've lost that black licorice, though. I'm getting more of the baking spices. I'm not really picking up baking spices so much. I'm picking up more seasoning spices. The clove, the orange zest, the... No, I'd, I'd say... Well, clove, I'd say yes. But clove for me is a, I guess a baking spice, sort of. I don't know. And then cinnamon. I'd say there's a definitely, yeah. a, there's definitely a cinnamon there. A little bit of a pepperiness. Not black pepper, but like a... I don't know, there's a spiciness this to it. This is like a bag of mulling spices. With like, yeah, because usually the mulling spices have like a little bit orange in them. Yeah. Now that I've had a sip, I'm enjoying this way more. Even the nose, I'm enjoying more. I would love to mix this with apple cider. Well, it's almost fall, and by the time you guys see this, we're going to be mid-October. Or early October, at least. I'm starting to get a little bit of nuttiness on the end. All right, adding a little water. It makes it more faint and gentle and dainty. A little more fruity floral, like an orange blossom. I think I am starting to pick up a little bit of apple or pear and some peach. I brought out on the palate a little more of the woody nuttiness. Yes, and it brought out some sweetness, which I thought just a touch of sweetness was missing. I like this. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> yeah, I really like it. We're going to move on to ratings. We're going to talk about the nose palette finish on a scale of zero to five. I really, really, really loved this nose. I loved all the spice notes that we got. I love this nose. The nose I'm giving a four. And it transitioned perfectly to the palate for me. What you smelled is what you got. And I was ex enthusiastic about what I was smelling. Equally enthusiastic about what I was tasting on this. So again, I'm going with a four on the palate. The only thing that I wish it had was just a tinge of sweetness. That probably would have kicked it up to a five for me. I just thought it was missing a little bit of that sugariness, a little bit of that creaminess finish. I thought it was well balanced. All the flavors transitioned well. The finish was really the downfall for this. Knocking it down to a three and a half. Yeah. Four on the nose, four on the palate, 2.5 on the finish. It was just enjoyable all around. The finish took a little bit of a dive, but that's just kind of normal for finishes in my opinion. Mm -hmm. uh, rarely do we put the finish above or equal to something, but every once in a while it happens. And this is definitely a whiskey, I'm saying it now before later, that you can add water to and it's not going to ruin it and it will increase your experience. I don't think it's the same notes. It's not the same whiskey with a little bit of water. Right. But it is worth the little bit of adventure. Like you can definitely do the adventure and have a good time and it's still going to be enjoyable either way. So let's talk about guesses now. We're going to guess what kind of whiskey we think it is, what we think the proof is, what we think retail price is, and then we will tell you how much we'd be willing to pay for a bottle of this. The spicy notes on this definitely leans me to either a rye or a high rye bourbon. I'm sticking to my guns with rye on this one, but bourbon would be my second guess. I'm not going to go as far as to say a bottled in bond. I'm going to say a 100 proof. 
I would be willing to pay $28 for this easily. No, I'm going to cut that down to 25 and I'm thinking it probably retails around 25 I think this is a bourbon. I think it's 90 proof. I think it retails for, I'd say around $20 is what I would, I'm going to say $20. And I'd be willing to pay about $20 for this. So I like it, just not as much as you like it, apparently. Also, you think it's a rye, so that kind of changes things a little bit. Yeah. Let's figure out what this is. Today we drank... Devil's Cut. Jim Beam Devil's Cut. That's a bourbon. It's a bourbon. It is 86 proof. No, it's 90 proof. It's 90 proof. 90. Okay. 90 proof. Uh, the idea for this whiskey is that... Oh, here we go. Let me just read you the side panel here. While bourbon ages and the angel's share evaporates, some also remains trapped inside the barrel. This is the devil's cut. We extract this dark and intense liquid from our charred white oak barrel walls and blend it with extra aged bourbon. Okay, I always wondered, like, how do you get enough bourbon from the barrel walls to create so many bottles? It's because they're blending it probably with like Jim Beam Black. You'd have to like really wring out those rungs of that barrel to yeah, I'm really curious what their extraction process is. Yeah. I will say, based on our Jim Beam video, and our Jim Beam White Label video, and our Jim Beam Repeal Batch video, that makes sense. Average MSRP across the country is actually $23.30. Mm. And I know we paid like 15 for it because it was on sale mm -hmm. and it had a coupon on it. This is one of those, it's, it's Jim Beam. It's a commercial success. It will go on sale from time to time. Mm -hmm. Theoretically, we're both, like we're saying, yeah, this is a, go ahead and give it a try. Decent decent enough whiskey. I've been wanting to try this, so thanks for putting it out there. <laughs> I still want to try it in a hot apple cider. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it would be a great additive. Yeah, and, and because it does have that, like the supposedly, you know, extracted from the wood, that does make sense of why we are getting a lot of the wood spice. spices. Yeah. yeah. That's what we think of this bottle. If you have comments, leave them down below. And if you enjoy what we're doing on this channel, go ahead and give us a like. And until next time, may the winds of fortune sail you. May you sail a gentle sea. May, may it always be, be the, the other, other guy who says, this drink's on me. me.